Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum, dear all viewers. This is Zakirullah with a new topic fixation of biopsy samples. In this uh, lecture, we will learn about the process of fixation, what is the purpose of fixation, and what is an ideal fixative. What are the different changes which occurs, or the possible changes which occur during the process of fixation, and we will also learn about what is the mechanism of action of the fixative and how the process of fixation that occurs and what are the different steps that uh, take place in the tissues. So basically fixation it is the process by which the cells in the tissue are fixed in a chemical and physical state and this process prevents all the biochemical, all the proteolytic activities that occurs uh, during life inside the cells. So, the fixation, it uh, try to stop and to capture all the original conditions of the cells or near to the original conditions, cells or tissues can resist any morphological change or decomposition after treatment with chemicals. As we know that uh, in the near future, we will uh, mix and we will add different types of chemicals and we will strain such tissues with different types of dyes. So during their process, the cells or the tissue they may change or uh, their morphology or they may uh, start autolysis, they may start decomposition. To stop all their processes, we will fix the tissues in the fixatives in a chemical substance which maintain all the structural component of the cells. So, for this purpose, we need a fixative. And it is the first step of any histological or cytological technique in histopathological laboratory and it helps to maintain the tissues to the nearest of its original condition in the living system. The purpose of fixation is to preserve the tissue nearest to the living state and its original state. The second purpose of the uh, fixation is to prevent any change in shape and in the size of tissue during the processing and uh, the fixation and all the process that comes after the uh, steps of fixation. To prevent any kind of autolysis that uh, starts after uh, death and after all the enzymes that are released from the cell. So, to prevent that autolysis, we will perform fixation of the tissue. And another purpose is to make the tissue uh, form or hard in such a way that we can easily process it, we can easily cut it into different sections. So, fixation is important for such properties. Another purpose of fixation is to prevent any kind of bacterial or fungal or any microorganism growth in the tissue because the tissue may be a good source and a good environment for any bacterial growth and one purpose of fixation is to have a clear and good stunning date. The fixative tends to maintain and to hold the stand which is given or applied to the tissues. And the last purpose of fixation is to have a better optical quality of the cells. That during the microscopy, the cells looks in good condition and they take a good uh, dye and the stains uh, is uh, in contact with the cells and the sense the cells have optical uh, better optical qualities 
that when we see in the microscope uh, to those cells, then those cells shows us a good morphology of the inside and the boundaries and all the constituents of the cells. How an ideal fixative should be so? An ideal fixative should prevent autolysis that after death the cells starts destroying its all components. So the first purpose of fixative is prevent the destroying and autolysis of the cells. And the second purpose is to prevent the cells from the other environmental condition or other microorganisms that tries to destroy the cell or that uh, tries to destroy the structure of the cells and start decomposition within the cells. The third property of an ideal fixative should be that it maintain the specific volume and shape of the organ or the biopsy. It is also important for an ideal fixative. An ideal fixative should retain its strain uh, during the process of straining and fixative should be uh, have a rapid um, mechanism of action that before autolysis and before de uh, bacterial decomposition it should uh, act on all the components all the structure or the proteins of the cell so to maintain cells in the original condition and of course it should be a cheap it and it should be a non-toxic so these are the different properties of an ideal fixative what are the different changes that occurs in the tissue during the process of fixation so the first change is the volume change certain type of fixatives for example osmium tetroxide when it is used as a chemical fixative so it can cause swelling of the cell the exact mechanism is uh, unknown but this swelling may be because of the membrane permeability changes is after death the certain proteins and certain components of the membrane they are denatured so the integrity of the membrane that is destroyed by osmium tetroxide or its own chemical reactions that uh, occurs after death so this swelling may be because of the change in the membrane permeability another possibility is the inhibition of enzymes responsible for respiration that the enzymes which uh, produce atps in within the cells so that maintains the volume of the cell when these enzymes they are inhibited then the cell it start swelling and the third possible cause of volume changes because of osmium tetroxide that is the change of transport of sodium ions this may also cause the swelling of the cells with the sodium ions that enters into the cell and water follows the sodium ions so sodium ions may swell during the process of fixation with the osmium tetroxide formaldehyde this fixative may cause volume shrinkage up to about 33 percent so these are the volume changes in the fixation other type of changes that occurs during the process of fixation is that the hardening of the tissue. During fixation, the tissue consistency changes and it uh, becomes slightly harder or it becomes slightly firm. As we uh, discussed in the previous slides, that uh, one of the property of an ideal fixative that it should maintain the structure of the uh, tissue so for maintaining a structure this hardening this is Im important and it helps us 
later date during the process of gross examination and during the process of uh, uh, fixation and all the process that comes after gross examination this hardening help us to take slices from important size, uh, sides of the biopsy changes of op optical density by fixation during fixation it uh, uh, may cause the changes in the optical density of the nuclei and the nuclei may look like condensed or it may look like hyperchromatic and during the staining it may uh, gain more stain as compared to the other part of the, uh, of the biopsy so when radiations are when waves are passed through these cells or this tissue this tissue may absorb most of the waves that's why we call that the optical density or the absorbance of the fixate uh, of the biopsy may be changed because of the process of fixation the one of the important change is the interference of staining, staining that uh, fixation may cause interference of uh, staining of different types of enzymes for example formaldehyde that inactivates 80 percent of ribonuclease enzyme and these enzymes may interfere with the process of staining as we know that osmium tetroxide it inhibits the uh, hematoxylin and eosin uh, uh, which is a routine staining so osmium tetroxide it inhibits the routine staining of the biological samples coming to the mechanism of action the how the fixation occurs and what are the mechanism and what is the story what is the science behind the fixation process the fixatives act by denaturing or precipitating proteins so this is the step which cause to hold the tissue in original condition or near to the original condition that all the proteins which is present in the tissue or which is present in the biopsy samples they are denatured or they are either precipitated and these denatured or precipitated proteins they form a sponge like meshwork and during this sponge and during this meshwork all the components that is present in between these protein they are hold in their original condition so the tissue it is held in the original condition or near to the original condition and one of the important property is that good fixation is important for a good histopathological result and a good staining other important elements which are good for fixation is that the tissue specimen it should be fresh that after the surgical procedure the tissue should be brought into the lab uh, as soon as possible and it should be fixed as soon as possible after removal from the body and it should be noted that the fixative have properly uh, penetrated into the tissue and the tissue is wholly covered by the fixative and the third important element for good fixation is that the fixative should be of correct size for example if we are processing a sample by routine uh, staining and routine mechanism that usually a formal saline or formalin is used and if there is for uh, any other kind of uh, histological examination or if there is any kind of special staining so we use other type of fixation depending on the type of stain or depending on the type of procedure one of the commonest cause of poor result is 
that inadequate penetration of the fixative. The tissue it does not comes in contact with the fixative, so the tissue did not get fixed and we did not get the proper or uh, the uh, results that we want to achieve. So for good results we need to have a proper penetration of the fixative of the tissue. Now how to fix large specimen or any special kind of tissue? It should be noted that fixative, any uh, almost all fixative, they do not penetrate a piece of tissue which is thicker than one centimeter. So we should make slices of the tissues for fixation that should be less than one centimeter. And for such samples and specimen, the following methods are recommended. For example, in case of solid organs, the slices should be made not thicker than the 5 mm. As we can see in the picture, that a tissue is sliced into round about 5 or uh, 5 mm, so that on the tissue it get penetrated into the tissue and every cell is very well fixed and we will have a good staining and a good result of such tissue. So for solid or hard organs they should be sliced into different uh, portions and different sections and each slice it should be not more than 5 mm thick. The brain, uh, when we receive whole brain, which is uncut, then pass a thick thread under the vessels at the base of the brain. And then this organ is lowered into a bucket which have the solution or which have the fixation. And then it is fixed in such a position that the brain it floats in the solution with the help of the thread and small biopsies it should first placed on a filter paper and then if possible attach a pin or a thread with the biopsy in such in certain conditions this is important but uh, it is not necessary that we should always attach a pin or thread and then put the biopsy in a solution. For example, if we can see here in the picture that on the left side we have a brain which is floating in the bucket and that is connected with the thread so that the brain is fixed in its original condition and all. Here in this picture we can see the small tissue it is present on a filter paper and it is connected with a thread so that it did not get lost and it is properly fixed in the fixer. Now how to fix a hollow organ? So after receiving hollow organs, either open the hollow organ from one end to the other end or another method is to fill the hollow organ with a fixative or pick lightly with a cotton soap in the large specimen which requires dissection for such specimen first inject the fixative along the vessels or bronchi in case of lungs and for lung specimen first the bronchi these are filled with fixative and then take a container which is at higher place than the organ and it can help us then the fluid that is inserted into the bronchi that inflates the bronchi 
and it is put into a large bucket which containing a fixative solution G. For processing of special tissues, for example in case of bones, if uh, it is processed routinely and there is no emergency case, so all bone specimen it must be fixed and then decalcified forming soluble calcium salts and this decalcification it is done with the help of acids usually we use 5 to 10 percent nitric oxide or hydrochloric acid and this decalcification it should be not more than 24 to 48 hours because these acid have a strong and fast action so that's why it should be not used more than 48 hours such kind of uh, process and such kind of fixatives these are recommended for very small bone pieces or for refined biopsies. Decalcification and point test this test is performed to detect decalcification in a bone or in a refined biopsy samples. So three kind of tests are performed for the decalcification detection. The first one is the radiographic examination, the second one is the chemical test and the third one is the physical test. Coming to the radiographic examination, this is the X-ray examination of the tissue and one of the most accurate technique to detect the end point decalcification in the bone specimen. But the problem is that it is a very costly uh, procedure and we also need pre-decalcification radiograph uh, for assessment of uh, the decalcification process. For example, if we can see here in the picture that on the left we have a bone which is uh, a de before decalcification, a radiograph which is before decalcification and on the right we have a radiograph in which it is shown that all the bone is almost decalcified. The second test to perform and to detect decalcification in test is the chemical test. This is also performed to assess the presence of calcium ions in the decalcifying solution in two successive times. This chemical test is applied when weak acid is used. It is a cumbersome method and usually ammonium hydroxide and ammonium oxalate are also used and these solutions are used to detect the precipitation in a solution. The third test to check decalcification that is the physical test and in most commonly it is performed in the routine histopathological laboratories. It is a crude test and it does not accurately detect the end point of decalcification but it is usually as it is cheap and fast method. So this test is performed and during this physical test the tissue is bent or a pin is introduced within the tissue to check softness or any kind of um, decalcification and to check any adequate decalcification. Adequate decalcification is detected by the tissue softness and that tissue could be bent easily and fit also should penetrate easily within the day, dead tissues. One of the disadvantage is that during this uh, physical test of decalcification, the tissue damage may occur because of the hole formation when we introduce a pen into the bone or when it is bent then it 
may distort and the structures of the cells may be distorted that's why these are the disadvantage of physical test so that was all for this lecture hope you have learned much more about the fixation process ideal fixatives mechanism of actions and the related process thanks for a uh, video lecture thank you all for your concentration and for watching the video hope you have liked the video assalam alaikum